Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine and today we're going to be going over um, the four T's in regards to postpartum hemorrhaging. Um, in the previous video I talked about uh, signs and symptoms of hemorrhaging, um, but right now I just want to talk to JCC students because this video is for them regarding uh, postpartum hemorrhaging the four T's. All right, so the first T, we already know what thrombin means. We learned about that in fundamentals. Uh, the first T is regard in regards to blood count, okay? Um, so what conditions can cause thrombin problems? Preeclampsia is a big one. Preeclampsia, because preeclampsia can cause high hypertension, really high, like abnormally high, that don't go down if she's sitting, if she's lying down, even if she's asleep. Um, and how it causes that is that with hypertension, your heart's already overworking itself already, which is putting stress on your blood vessels. And with uh, preeclampsia, the mom, she's already having poor um, blood flow, which can uh, alter uh, the perfusion to her organs already. Um, so if something were to go wrong, like she switched from preeclampsia to eclampsia to help syndrome, it's a bad, bad day. Another condition associated with thrombin is um, placenta abruption. So what placenta abruption is, placenta abruption is when um, the placenta detaches from the wall of the uterus. There is no known reason for placenta abruption. However, there are risk factors because there's risk factors with everything. Just like there's risk factors with preeclampsia. But what happens is, is that it separates from the wall of the uterus so much so that blood pools. Okay, it creates a uh, it creates a like a like a big puddle of blood in between the wall and the um uh uh the uterus and it's very painful. Um, it can lead to just your placenta just detaching from the wall randomly. Um, and what happens is I'm talked about. Well, what happens is DIC, but I'm going to get into that. Um, it's a medical emergency. I'm going to get into that later. Um, other conditions that can cause uh, thrombin problems is pyrexia. Pyrexia, because if you have, if a mom already has a, a if mom has an a infection that causes her temperature to be really high, um, that means her blood, first of all, she's already pregnant. You got to think this stuff through as a nursing student. She's already pregnant. She already has, um, She's already at risk of uh, anemia. She already has a very, very high white blood cell count. Um, and her platelets are um, just, they may, uh, due to the stress, um, just just go in platelet over, overload moment, um, which um, I'll get into DSC in a minute. Other coagulation problems that can cause a uh, throbbing that is in relation to the first T of throbbing is a uh, von Willebrand's disease and hemophilia. Uh, hemophilia is a, a blood condition that, for some reason, when you bleed, your platelets don't activate, um, or they activate very slowly. For that mom, you're definitely not going to give her aspirin. Uh, so, how are all these things related? I have it up there already. Uh, it causes DIC. DIC stands for disseminated intravascular coagulation. So what normally happens with platelets, you start bleeding, your platelets come, they signal more platelets to come, and uh, they plug up that site. So with DIC, you have an imbalance between that, uh, that clotting factor, so much so that your platelets you'll either have too little or you'll have too much. And um, it can cause like your platelets to go like haywire, okay? And so much so that they'll start clotting everywhere. So much so where you run out of platelet resources. So people, this is what helped me help, help me remember when I was talking to a nurse one time because I asked her about uh, DIC. So with DIC, you only have a certain number of platelets, okay? And pregnant women only have, they only have a certain number of platelets too. So if your platelets, 
platelets are in over in overdrive and you are not making enough platelets to fulfill this need of coagulation, the blood has to go somewhere. Okay. And if your platelets aren't doing what they're supposed to do, because maybe you ran out or they're acting crazy, we'll talk about that crazy point portion of DIT in a minute. Um, but if you run out, you're gonna start bleeding out your forehead, out your sweat, I mean, out your pores, in your eyes, your nose, your ears, everywhere, okay? And it's really, really hard to stop that type of bleeding. The other type um, I talked about was with ischemia, when your uh, platelets go crazy, uh, they'll start clouding everywhere, like so much so that they will block off perfusion to your major organs. It is bad to where uh, it can not only harm the mom, but it can harm the baby. Um, moving on, tissue. So retained placenta. So tissue problems is in regards to mostly in regards to the placenta problem. And all these boxes, you'll notice besides trauma, you'll notice that and tone and tissue are in regards to placenta problems. The number one reason I mentioned in a video previously to a postpartum hemorrhaging is a placenta problem. Um, but with tissue, retain plus tissues, um, in regards to that, I'm not going to go into detail, but what happens is too much detail. But what happens is, is that you're, if you have a piece of your placenta still left in there, which can occur up to six weeks after you leave the hospital, um, your, your placenta, uh, you're, you're not going to be able to, um, involute. You're going to be subvoluted, which means that you have this big gaping hole that is not contracting down, it's not going back to pre-pregnancy size, and it's bleeding. That is a, 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 a retained placenta. Now, placenta accreta is a condition that affects your tissues of not only your vagina, but it goes deeper. It goes into your myometrium, which is your muscle. Um, and that can cause problems so much so that the mom may even have to get a hysterectomy. The last one is uh, retained conception products. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, next one is tone. So when we're talking about tone of the uterus, we're talking about uh, the tone of the uterus. So things that can happen that can make you bleed um, is year to atony. I'm gonna go in detail, but year to I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, um, but I'm gonna go in detail in another video. Year to atony is the condition where the uterus is boggy and is not firm. That means that uh, a boggy uterus indicates that the uterus is not subvoluting and is bleeding somewhere. Um, another issue in regards to tone is placenta previa. Placenta previa is a condition where uh, the placenta, for some reason, decides to implant in the lower segment of the uterus. Uh, and when, uh, usually they find it early on, but um, if not, during contractions, because uh, the contractions, if they start at the lower segment of the uterus when the, when the baby's about to come out, uh, it can create little microfibers of tears, uh, which can cause bleeding, which can um injure the endomedia endothelial layer of the vagina or the not the vagina oh my gosh the uterus I'm tired all right another thing that can affect tone is um that can make you bleed is over distension now in a previous video i talked about how um the uterus is like a rubber band um if you overstretch it too much like a rubber band it's going to be hard to get that back down and that is due to whether you have a uh two two babies um if you have twins or um if you have uh too much water in there too i forgot to mention that too polyhydro hydromonious uh and if you have a big baby they can cause tone issues um another one would be a uh, thing that relaxes your uterus which is a big condition another video i talked about general anesthesia 
ooh, risk for bleeding. Um, another drug that can uh, relax the uterus is magnesium sulfate. Um, so you want to make sure that you're assessing the mom if she's on mag, especially if she has preeclampsia. You're going to put her on mag to reduce seizure precautions, but you also need to make sure and watch out to see if she's bleeding. And also history plays a part too. Um, if you have a history of postpartum hemorrhaging in relation to these tone issues, um, like let's say uh, you had a macrosomial baby and you probably have ma another macrosomial baby. Um, yeah, so just history. Um, trauma. Trauma in regards to anything in the lower genital tract will cause bleeding trauma. Uh, an example would be if she had a C-section, if she had a episiotomy, and again, if she had a uh, macrosomia. No. <sighs> C-section is a major surgery. So with any surgery, you're going to be at risk for bleeding. Episiotomy too, uh, definitely bleeding. And macrosomial baby, um, just, it's just so big. It may rip your vagina. And it can probably, due to all the stress of pushing, pushing too hard can lead to a hematoma, which we'll get into a bit a little later. Other factors that can cause um, bleeding or increase that are risk factors of uh, postpartum hemorrhage are Asian, Asian women, redheaded women. And with redheaded women, you want to make sure that you ask her if she is not a natural blonde. And there's a few natural blondes in this world or a natural uh, brunette or whatever, or just ask her if you're a redhead um, so you know what to expect. Another uh, risk factor is that she has a prolonged labor, her age group, and if she has a BMI over 35, and if she has been induced. Um, so you just want to, uh, those are other risk factors as a nursing student that we should know. So I'm going to go over the risk factors that aren't up here one more time. So the other risk factors associated with postpartum hemorrhaging are Asian women, redheaded women, Induction, BMI over 35, prolonged labor and age. If she's over the age of 35 or she's having a baby when she is 46 or whatever, not everybody can be like Halle Berry, I'm just saying, but those are risk factors that increase your risk of hemorrhaging. Um, and I hope you like my video and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.